Hey guys and ladies, welcome back. Tonight I'm going to do something that this 1954 uh, Cincinnati Toolmaster 1D really needs. I'm going to replace its windows. Now, this is a pretty simple procedure, but I'm going to show you the easy way I've figured out how to do it over the years. This is a Bajour oil window. Uh, I've got some close-up pictures of them, show you the different types there. This one is one of the clear ones like in the headstock of the Axelsons. So you can see through dripping oil through that one. This one has an oil level indicator on it and you can see this one has a back. Silver shiny back so that you can actually see contrast between the oil and the back. It's easier to read. Now this one has an oil line in. The one we just we installed down here does not have a line on it. But that's okay because that's just a full reservoir. Now the only place I've found that always has these things is Fluid Line Systems. That's their email and phone number. You can order them online. It's easy. Take credit cards and they ship them out pretty fast. I think I got these in a week. I've tried as I can to search other places like my master car. They just don't have them or I can't find them on their website. Now, all windows have been around a long time. This is a 1954 Axelson 16 inch. And there's a clear window that allows you to see inside in a little tube that uh, drips. So you know the oil pump's working. There's also one we replaced down here and it shows me the head oil level. And then down here in the apron, there's another one that shows me the apron oil. Windows are also on this 1974 Bob brand lathe. That one's in the apron. And there's another one over here for this self-oiler that shows you the uh, the level for the uh, carriage lubrication. Keep it full. It's my advice to everyone. Now, we'll get back to you in just a minute there, Mr. Cincinnati. This is another... 1943, I think, model. And it has the same drip feed. And look how dark that oil is. Getting ready to change it all. This has got a built-in oil filter, but it needs it. And, of course, there's another one down on the carriage. My point being is, Azure oil filter, or excuse me, oil windows, are pretty common. Um, there's one thing that you really need to understand when you order these. They give you a lot of times two dimensions. They'll say like an inch and a quarter, and then it'll say window. Well, that's the window size that you can see between the silver part. Now, this is actually an inch and a quarter with a one inch window. So, when you order it, make sure you measure the opening that it's going to be inserted into. Now for the, the easy part. Years and years ago, I used to sit there and prime out with screwdrivers. And somebody gave us a tip. I don't remember who it was, but it works like a charm. So I'm passing it on. This is a seal puller. I am the proud owner of two of these now. I spent 45 minutes yesterday looking around for my other one. Now, unless it's at Don's shop. You got my back. Don't electrocute me now. <laughs> yeah, that'd be really easy to do, and you couldn't do a thing about it. That'd be true. I'd be sitting there going, ah, I made it. That's my story. So, 
there's unfortunately no way to save these uh, windows and there's no way to clean them. Uh, you can't get in through the back with, when they have a back on them, this little shiny surface. You, you can't get in there. You can try and flush it out, but I think these are $14 a piece. It just takes a second to, to change them out. Then you have nice clean ones. Don't drive your truck with a dirty windshield, do you? I do. <laughs> of course, I live on a county road that was said to be paved back in, uh, well, I don't remember. But 12 years ago, the realtor that was selling this place to us told me it was going to be paved. Let me get all my stuff together and we'll get after it. All right. I've got a few things that make it a little easier. Got a gallon jug here, a funnel, this seal puller, and my body hammer. I have truly come to appreciate how useful this thing is. So what I'm going to do is I don't know how much oil's in here, but I'm going to take and crack it. Got a hole in it. So far, nothing's coming in out. I know there's something in there. Stick this in. Get it behind there. And out she comes. Well, that was anticlimactic. About that sports friends. If I had to have been prepared, there would have been 40,000 gallons. I'll reach in there and get everything I can. Okay, I'm back. I forgot a few of the items that's kind of helpful to have around. First off, I needed some acetone. You already saw me pull out that piece, that window, so now I'm going to clean up inside that a little bit, but before I get too far ahead of myself, I'm going to take and stuff a piece of uh, towel in that opening, and the reason being is I'm going to buff away the paint that's around it. Now you don't have to do this. A lot of times if they're repainted, they'll be crusty around there. But there's about a 98% probability I'm going to have to paint this thing. And while I got it out, I might as well prep around that area. I just love these little Milwaukee fuel things with the uh, pads on them. They just something coming to fix that too. Y'all are going to like it. All right. Now put a little acetone on that. Clean it up real well. Let that dry. I don't know what kind of paint they put on here. I don't know if the acetone affects it or not. Sure to get a lot of chips in it. The gray is the factory color, and it's got off of blue is the what they painted it. I like gray myself. All right. Hush. Come on. Okay. 
Now this is my window. If you notice on the back of this window, there's two holes. You want those holes to be at the 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock position. One will allow the oil to come in at its lowest point. If you put it over here on the side, oil may not get in there until it's halfway full. And then it wouldn't have any way for the air to get out. So always put the top hole at the 12 o'clock, bottom hole, and it doesn't matter, they're both the same. Another little thing I like to do, and it's not totally necessary, but I like to put a little green thread locker on there. And the reason I do that is just in case there's a little imperfection, it'll seal it. And the reason I like the green, it's actually an afterlock thread locker. It, 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 and I know there's other things you could use. Heck, chewing gum would probably work. I've got it in there. I'll take my little insertion tool. And it needs a little bit more heft than that body hammer is going to give it. Put that on there. Ta-da! Pretty simple, huh? Pretty simple. So now, when we put oil in here, we'll be able to see it come up through that window. I don't know how many of you ever used this afterlock. This is a 290. It wicks into the threads after you tighten the bolt up. And it cures anaerobically without any oxygen. So, you like my wire nut cap? This stuff's good. You can make up your bolts, squirt some of that on there, and it'll wick into it, and life is good. What would you put in there, guys? How about whey oil? Whey oils are different than most of the hydraulic oils I use. It's a little stickier. Might just have to pump it in there. All right. This is whey oil. As I said, it's a little stickier than the other. It's made for ways of machines. Now I go to my Chevron distributor. All right, whoa. Man, that didn't take much. I guess it doesn't matter because you want to fill it up. There's no oil line. All we care about if it's full or not. And there we go. That didn't take much at all. How's you doing down here? I'm going to give a few squirts to the other side. Now this one down here takes care of the... We can't see it, Steve. I'll show you in a second. Why is everything always empty?
Down here on the side is another oiler. This oiler, if I remember right, takes care of the table screw up and down in the back ways. Now I find these are a pain in the butt to put oil in by a cup or funnel. So squirt gun works good. This kind of acts as its own sight glass. You look inside there and see if there's any oil in the bottom. It kind of gives you the level. There we go. And you pull that out. And it'll slowly go back in on its own. Now the, the hum you hear in the background is the phase converter. I don't have true three-phase out here in the country, so I have to make my own. This machine is now set up for 220 three-phase. Yay! Now, to start it up, there's a main control panel over here. When you go to start it, you got to come over here to the side panel. and It's got a start, stop, power feed on and off, and a coolant on and off. You have to hit the start button, which energizes the contactor in the back for anything to work. So right now, I'm going to turn on the feed motor. Which is, I've turned on the feed motor, which is over here. And this is the control for left and right on the table. Oh, I put a lot of oil in those ways. Good for it. On this model, these are stops for when this lever contacts the appropriate stop, it changes direction. Like this one right here is going to come in and stop it. Over here, you can change the feed. Well, you can't see down there. Here we go! That's it. I'm going to come over here and change the speed. It's got six different speed ratios you can do. And over here, I'm going to make it go back. You can see how it's moving very slow. Let's make it go faster. Take it out of here. We'll make some little brass handles for this. Put Bob to work. Alright, that should be faster. That's how you control the speed of your cut. Now this machine, so you can go back and forth. Now this machine has backlash compensators on both the y-axis and the x-axis and man that really helps that keeps backlash to an absolute minimum I mean it's immediate back and forth that's why I say the bottom part of this machine is in fantastic shape all right 
about the top. You want to hear it roar to life? No. Nope. Toolmasters are totally different from most of the import Bridgeport type machines in that <coughs> a Bridgeport has a uh, draw screw that goes all the way through the head, screws into the bottom of your, your collet, and then you put a wrench up on top and tighten it up. Toolmaster has an enclosed head. You can't get into that uh, draw bar. So it's not a draw screw, it's a draw bar. This little device right here is, is, is locked into position by this switch. You can't turn it when it's in that position. The switch won't let it turn on. It's a safety feature. So what you do is you raise the draw, uh, the, the spindle to the very top. You push that in and that has forks that lock around the nut on top of the draw bar. And then you use a wrench down here to tighten up your collet. Seems to work pretty well. Anyway, we're going to take the lock off. We have the main engine uh, uh, panel energized back there. So now we're going to turn it on and see the spindle go. We change speeds up here by Rotating this, it changes the size of the two pulleys. One gets bigger, one gets smaller. Just changing the effective diameter of the pulleys to give it more speed. You also have a high neutral and low speed here so you can swing it down. Right now I have it in high. Kick it along at about 2400 RPMs. Sounds pretty good, huh? This is your power feed for up and down. Got an automatic kick out. You can adjust this for depth, and when it hits, it will kick it out. Ta da! The reverse. And it'll stop turning when it hits the top. And it'll go down. Give you this poor manual feed here. Now you can go up and down. Well, folks, we kind of come to a, a breaking point in this build. I've replaced the motor with a two horsepower motor that's been rewound to 220. It's running good. I've replaced the very discs that were in there. Put in two new complete very discs. So that's all in good shape. It's got a good belt up there. Went through the whole top head, greased it, took off the power feed, changed the oil seal in the back of it so it wasn't leaking oil down through the spindle. All that's back together and working good. Redid the manual feed, got the wire off of it that some idiot had put on there. Now I've I, I, I tigged up the gears and filed them all back down to the original size and fixed all that in there, so that works nice. Changed the oil window tonight. Went through and got all the electrical working the way it should, so at least be safe. 
I'm happy with it. And it's going to probably go to a good home. We'll see. Now, I have a favor to ask of you. See, my wife has a dog. And she and I truly love this little dog. But it seems that every time that dog's been in a video, even for a second on my channel, I lose subscribers. So I've been very hesitant to, to put that dog on, on the camera because subscribers is the only thing I get out of this deal. I don't get paid very much and I do enjoy watching the subscriber count go up and uh, thanks to you guys, uh, we're up five or six thousand this year. Thank you. I truly, truly thank you for hanging out with an old guy and some old machines out in the country. Now, here's my favor. I want to put Rosie the shop dog that could never be at the end of this video. And we're going to count and see how many of you guys run screaming away in terror from a little dog. Anyway, Rosie has a lot of hair, about yay long. And she would have so many chips in her after about five minutes that I'd spend all night trying to pick the chips out of her. Now, I could shave the dog where that wouldn't be a problem, but I think she'd get really cold and look really funny because under that hair, there's not much dog. So here you go. Hope you enjoy Rosie, the shop dog that could never be. Damn, you look good. Well, pretty to me. Rosie, you want to play? Where's your toy? Is this your toy? Let me have it. Let me have it. You better give it to me. Arr. Give me that toy. Arr. All right. Rosie the dog. You're a COVID dog. Drove to Pennsylvania to pick you up during the bad COVID times. <laughs> I got it. I got it. You ready? Oh, you missed it. You missed it. Arr. Oh, you missed it again. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Arr. You, you had that much in me. <laughs> Get your toy. Right here. Arr. Okay, I got the toy. I got the toy. Ready? You think you can catch this? Oh. Oh. <laughs> give me that. Give me that. Give me that. Give me that. I got it. <laughs> oh, Rosie. All right. One more time. You better let me have that. You're not going to do it, are you? <laughs> you got more energy than any YouTube dog. <laughs> Give me that. Give me that. Okay. Release. No way, huh? This is mine, and you're not going to get it back. <laughs> All right, come on, one more time, one more time. <laughs> All right, ready? Coming at you. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> so that's enough. <laughs> I gotta go to work, Rosie. Bye. <laughs> Round, dude.